Welcome to Computer Lesson Plans by Teacherholic.com. Today's lesson is on using Google more effectively. One of the things I notice when my students are just searching on the net is that they don't really have the skills to effectively find what they're looking for. So I teach them a couple of little tricks to help them sort out what they're trying to find. For example, uh, let's say we're doing a search on the first fleet going to Australia. They might put First Fleet Australia in by clicking Google Search here. We get a range of results. You'll see up here there's around 3,550,000 uh, results for First Fleet Australia. Now, out of those results, we've got an alphabetical list of transported convicts, 11 ships of the First Fleet, and so on. If we want to cut those results down a little bit and try and make it more accurate now, you know, you can see some of those results are quite good. First thing we can do is put inverted commas or speech marks, depending on how you put it, around the word first fleet. Because those two words, we want them side by side. At the moment, when we have first fleet separately, the first could be up here on the page, and the fleet could be down here on the page, and as far as the Google search is concerned, that's the same page. So you're finding first fleet together. By putting them like this with the inverted commas around them, it means that you can easily isolate those words on the page. So they must be beside each other like here in this heading. So if I go search, you'll now notice my results have dropped to 144,000. So we've gone from 3.5 million down to 144,000 which is considerably more accurate. So you can imagine when you're searching for something more complex than this, then uh, you can isolate a lot better results more quickly. The other, next thing I teach the students is to read the web address of the place. Now in this case it's got an org in it, so it's an organization, so that indicates something to us. The next one, uh, home, vicnet, you know, there's no real domain, these are bits and pieces. We come down to here. Culture and Recreation, gov.au, Articles, Australian History. Now, being a government site, that certainly indicates to me that that's probably better information for the students to start looking at. But it still could be useless, but it does give them an idea of the sort of thing that they need. Here's another one, members.tripod. That's a free website, Tripod's free websites. Um, again, may have good information, but maybe not the best place to start. So by starting to look for different things, you can help your students find things more accurately. Searching a little bit more with uh, advanced techniques is probably more helpful as time goes on and the students get older. Up here on Google you've got a little thing called Advanced Search. If we click that and go there, you'll see that now we have some choices. Find results with all of the words. So you can put a set of words in here and make sure that every single word is on the page. Find with exact phrase, so there's our first fleet. With at least one of these words, so maybe put a few different words in that you think mean similar things, or without the words. So you might be looking for something like uh, dog training. Now that's a phrase, so we put it together. But we don't want anything about cats. In fact, we'll leave the S off, we'll just make it cat. That way it'll leave out anything with cats, etc. as well. Language return page is written in, and you can choose what, uh, a particular language. File format. You might only want to find PDF files, which are generally like produced documents that people have written and then converted. Or maybe you're only looking for PowerPoint files, some publications, etc. So you can isolate your search considerably there. Uh, web pages updated in. You might want them updated in the past three months. You want something that's rather modern information about dog training. Um, and from a certain domain. So maybe you only want to search within, say, a site called dogtraining.com. Whether that site exists or not, I have no idea. But you could put it in there if you knew there was a big site. Uh, once you have entered all of those things in, if you go to Google search, it brings your results up. And you'll see here you've got plenty of results about dog training. 
Now there's a couple of things to notice here. First thing is at the top here, this blue bar. These are sponsored links, so that's paid advertising. Now sometimes that's good because you know that the people who are writing this stuff are looking to get people to their sites, but many times it's just information that people are trying to sell, which while is good for someone at home, may not be suitable for your students because you don't wish to buy the stuff, you just want to be able to read about it and they need information that they can read without having to pay up front. So the same applies to these results down the side here in the sponsored links. Again, paid advertising. So let's go under the blue and start looking down here. So a library of lots of online articles from many authors on all aspects of dog training and it's at an educational site. So that's probably a good place to have a look. Now I scroll down, you'll see down the bottom here that you've got a lot of results. By clicking number two it will take you to the next page and so on and so forth. So that's a little introduction to searching on Google. Nothing too flash, but some basic techniques that can help your students work more effectively. Remember, isolate words in inverted commas or speech marks to make them look for the exact phrase. Use the minus sign to remove a word so you don't want dog training and nothing about cats. And that's easily done in the advanced search. Uh, make sure that your spelling is correct. And finally, uh, encourage your students to ignore these links unless they're looking to purchase something. Thanks a lot and I'll catch you again at teacherholic.com.